This is him on Fox News speaking to who knows how many thousands to tens of thousands, to hundreds of thousands to millions of Americans, basically saying, hey, look, I tried to assassinate Nancy Pelosi. I uh, am very happy I did that. You're welcome. I don't know how to open about this story because this story only continues to get more insane. And all of the people who jumped the gun on this, on this story early on, when this assassination attempt and attempted kidnapping and torture first occurred and tried to say, oh, De Pepe is Nancy Pelosi's husband's gay lover. Whether it was Jimmy Dore or it was that MMA uh, fighter, that right-wing MMA fighter who has spread misinformation a lot, no matter who it is, uh, a lot of people have gotten this wrong. A lot of people have gotten this wrong. And so I want to say when it comes to the Paul Pelosi attack, I have been kind of, I would say braggadocious over this a little bit because this is such like the easiest story. Like you really believed based on un, uh, like unverified information with anonymous sources on some random website with no credibility that Nancy Pelosi's husband had his head beaten in with a hammer because he was involved in a secret gay love affair, not because... It was some crazed maniac trying to kill him, like all the other news outlets were reporting, like, like you know, everybody in the Nancy Pelosi family was saying. And you believed it with no evidence. And the people who believed it only believed it because they wanted to believe it, because they don't like the left. They don't like Nancy Pelosi. They don't like Democrats. It's as simple as that. And I've seen a few people still try to hold on to this conspiracy theory through it all, Right? Doesn't matter that there's been footage released now showing De Pepe attacking Nancy Pelosi's husband with a hammer while he's fully closed. So it doesn't really make sense. It was like, oh, it was a, it was an affair if he's attacking him fully closed. We have footage of him breaking into the house of Nancy Pelosi because he wanted to kidnap Nancy Pelosi and torture her with a hammer, breaking her kneecaps. And now we have audio. We have audio from the person who tried to assassinate. Uh, Nancy Pelosi's husband and torture Nancy Pelosi of him calling into Fox News. Of course, this would be on Fox, by the way. Where else? Calls into Fox News from jail on Friday and just straight out lets out a a like mass shooter style manifesto. He said he had a message for America. He said, you're welcome. Then he like rambles before saying, I also want to say I'm sorry. I'm sorry I didn't get more of them. Let's play the audio. And while we listen to the audio, do listen to the Fox broadcasters in the background who are kind of just flabbergasted by how insane this person is. Let's listen. Oh, what, what, what do you want to say? Because they release, as you know, they released the video earlier today. Yeah, I saw that. Yes. What, what did you want? Thank you for calling me. What did you want? What did you want to tell me? Um, now that you all have seen the body cam footage, have an emotion. It's an important message for everyone in America. You're welcome. Uh, uh, Freedom of liberty isn't dying. It's being killed systematically and deliberately. The people killing it have names and addresses. So I got their names and addresses so I could pay them a little visit and have a heart-to-heart -heart chat about their bad behavior. The tree of liberty needs watering. You need men of valor, patriots willing to put their own lives on the line to stand in opposition to tyranny. I would also like to apologize. I want to apologize to everyone. I messed up. What I did was really bad. I'm so sorry. I didn't get more of them. It's my own fault. No one else is to blame. I should have come better prepared. I spent all my time exposing government corruption online, only to have them silence my freedom of speech as quickly. Okay, we're gonna finish this. But just a thought before we break down this entire message. Just thought. God, I would hate to be this guy's public defender. Oh my God, he's having a bad day. If they could. They circumvented the Constitution and in private industry. But the ruling class outsources their repression of your civil rights to private industry. It's called fascism. I have a lot more to say. I had a website of over 300 pages. That's 300 pages of stuff they don't want you to hear. I'm in the process of trying to set up a new site out of the reach of tyrannical global global fascists and their internet censors. Okay, so first things first, this guy seemed to be too far even for 
Fox. You can hear the Fox crew in the background, kind of like, what? Oh my God. Like, you can kind of hear them kind of freaking out a little bit over what he's saying. Because, like, let's just be blunt, this is a call for mass violence. This is a call for assassinating politicians. This is a call for terrorism. Uh, he, he is basically saying, like, look, the people you don't like politically have addresses, they have homes, you can go to their homes, and you can kill them and their families. And, I, and I'm going to say it includes their families, because the person who was attacked by David DePepe was not Nancy Pelosi, it was her husband. An unelected person, a person with influence. He's a, you know, he's a financier. He's a very wealthy man, but not Nancy Pelosi. And so this is him on Fox News speaking to who knows how many thousands, to tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, of millions of Americans, basically saying, "Hey, look, I tried to assassinate Nancy Pelosi. Uh, I uh, am very happy I did that. You're welcome. The only thing I apologize for is I didn't kill her." I didn't get more of them, but don't worry. You can read my manifesto online, my 300 words, and you, you at home can pick up a gun, pick up a hammer, pick up a bat, and go to the homes of the people who are killing freedom. Also, I don't really, I didn't understand the line that he said. He, it was something along the lines of, freedom isn't dying, it's systematically being killed. I don't. I think he's trying to say it's not like just dying randomly, like people are doing this. But if something's dying, if something's being killed, then it is dying. Like it, I, that didn't really make much sense. But I can't, I can't really expect a a crazed lunatic uh, political assassin, uh, a a terrorist. If we're gonna be frank, from what we're listening to now, uh, we can't really expect them to make coherent sense because again, the cuckoo. Go, 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 go. He broke into the house of elected official, tried to beat their husband to death with a hammer. I don't really think this guy is going to be like the peak of, of mental health. Now, there's a few things about this that I, I do want to wrap up on because first off, of course, and I could say this all day, I could drag on endlessly. And I do mean endlessly about, hey, guys, there was all these people who said it was a gay lover. All of them look like morons. All of them are fools. I can't believe they bought that nonsense just because they didn't want to believe that somebody could actually do something very negative to the Pelosi's that could possibly make them look be, be viewed in a favorable light. Jimmy Dore didn't want to accept that. Uh, that uh, a bunch of other content creators and, and commentators didn't want to accept it. Conspiracy theorists didn't want to accept it. Uh, and so they, they did everything they could to deny it until the last possible moment. And for all those people, I just want to say you should not trust any of those people with your money. You should not trust any of those people with your attention. And you should not trust any of those people with your belief system. Because if they were willing to lie about this and wait till the last possible moment to reverse it, even though, even though the, they had basically no information backing up the gay theory outside of just rumors, if you trust these people, with your mind, with with your attention going forward, they're just gonna lie to you again. They're gonna trick you again. They're gonna try to con you. They're gonna try to fool you. Either because they're dumb and they fell for it, or because they're a con man and they think you're dumb and that you'll fall for it. So that's the first thing. The second thing that I wanna say here is, how the hell did this guy get on Fox? So I assume, when it comes to jail, like you get phone calls, right? Every, you, everybody sees this on the television, right? You know, oh, you get one phone call. I don't think that's true, right? Like you get one phone call uh, or like right when you get arrested or anything. But I do believe eventually you can't call people. And so he decided, I guess, to use his one phone call to call Fox headquarters. I don't know. How did he know which number to call? Did somebody like send him a piece of letter in jail or, or call him in jail or get in contact with him in jail and say, this is the number you need to call if you want to be on national television. Why did Fox accept his request? I mean, I can understand it from a journalistic point of view, um, but like this guy is just straight out, just pumping out his terrorist manifesto. And if there's any uh, news station in the planet who I do not think is responsible enough to, to, bring on a, a person who's ass, advocating for terrorism, it's probably Fox. And from how this clip looked, I mean, I think that might've been on point as well. 
And lastly, this guy is just a terrorist. He's not only a terrorist, but he's, advoca uh, he's advocating for other people to go to the homes of elected officials and murder them, kill them, blow them up, shoot them. That is what he's advocating for. He is, he is not doing any if and buts or maybes. This is somebody who should be locked up for a very, very, very long time. He is a ever-present danger to society in his current state. Maybe one day, if they get him the right amount of meds, they pump him full of the right amount of drugs, and, and they give him enough therapy, maybe 30, 40 years from now, then we can start talking about letting this guy out. But if we let this guy out, all he's going to do is go straight back to some other politician's home and try to beat them to death. Like He is, he is completely unrepentant, and this guy's defense lawyer is going to have a terrible, terrible couple of weeks. Oh my goodness. Um, and so lastly, I want to say the reason why people did everything they could to pretend that this guy isn't like how we just listened to him, a right-wing crazed maniac who wants to assassinate Democrats, is because if they did have to acknowledge that, then they would also probably have to acknowledge that we have a problem, problem when it comes to right-wing political extremism, or just political extremism, period, to be honest. But when it comes to violence and like political assassinations and planning of stuff like that, that seems to be a majority right-wing problem. Now, when you talk about like rioting on the streets, stuff like that, th this gets to a different issue. Right when you talk about property damage and that type of political violence, but when it comes to targeted political assassinations, one one side of the political aisle seems to be dominating in this in that, and we can't like pussyfoot around it and like pretend it isn't happening. It's happening, and we got to address it. Anyway, that's enough of that. Why didn't you say this when Steve Scalise got shot up by Bernie bro by a Bernie bro? Um. What did I say when Steve Scalise... When did the Steve Scalise shooting happen? Steve Scalise shooting. Um, well, this happened in 2017. And I was in high school. So the reason I probably didn't say anything was because I didn't have a show. And I was 16. So that's probably why I didn't say anything. Uh, I also didn't comment on the Iraq invasion. I was too busy uh, watching um, Little Bill and Bob the Builder. Uh, maybe that was not the most productive use of my time at the age of three. But uh, may maybe I should have gotten out there with Max Blumenthal and Glenn Greenwald and, and marched against the Iraq invasion. Maybe that was my role. Sorry I wasn't there for that. <laughs> Desert Storm was Dylan's first political action. Yeah, I was, I was, I was actually a elected blue dog Democrat at the age of three. We need to bomb, kill Saddam, hang him by his feet, hang him by his feet over the palace. I was, I was one of those guys.